Hi, everybody. Welcome to the club, whores. Welcome to the whore club. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Bold and bold. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about prep because it's Pride Month. It is Pride Month. Happy Pride and to those who celebrate, also to our allies. And if you don't and celebrate, go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, no. And you know what? Even to you out there who hate us, you guess what? Yeah, you should also prepare. Do you know how many of us are born a minute? Get ready. Yeah. You know, a gay baby was born this second. The second I said that, a gay a popped out of a womb. <laughs> it came out of the closet and came out of the womb at the same time. And its name is probably Damien. And it's probably your baby. So you congratulations, you have a gay baby. I want a gay baby, but not yeah. like a not like a one that needs me to train it. Cabbage Patch dolls are gay babies. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. They really, really were. Those little cherub faces. That's yeah. a gay baby. That like a gay baby. They all had gay face. And Gosh, if you guys know, they really you did. Know. They really did. Man, did you had a cabbage patch? My sister had cabbage patch dolls, but surprisingly, they I came out of a lettuce it. patch. They did come out of the lettuce patch. Devil's lettuce patch, by the way. So it was all <laughs> they were wrapped in marijuana leaves. <laughs> I mean, leave it to somebody who was like totally high off their rocker in the toy department, the toy development team, and been like, you know what? We need babies that are kind of made out of cloth and have limp noodle bodies, but really rock the hard heads. And the box looks like a lettuce. Okay, here's the thing though the hands and the feet were made out of cement. Right. So whenever you would shake them, they would be like, Dude, they dangled about and no joke, like you said, their heads, you could, you could squish them, but it would take a, a lot of skulls to smash that head. Like <laughs> yeah. they are literal weapons. Yeah, you could, we could squish them and make them look really distorted. I remember that. I want to go back to the person who was in the toy department, who was creating this, who was like, listen, they're at work. They had the most boring lunch. It was just lettuce. They were on a diet. You're like, uh, and in their head, they were like. You know, it'd be cool as if a baby came out of this. <laughs> yeah. Because if I like opened up my head of lettuce and there was the most adorable cherub face staring back at me. Like, okay, for real, you're right. They were so stoned. It's um, like a nightmare if you think about it. I really don't like the idea. A cabbage patch. A cabbage patch. This is like, it's seriously, it is one step away from children of the corn. It's a sidestep. <laughs> Could you imagine that a real life horror film cabbage patch? Is it in the public domain? John, we do this? John oh no, we've just given everybody an idea. I know. That's okay. Yeah. You know what? You guys can have it. I mean, nobody that can beat sweet. Chucky. Chucky literally came out of the cabbage patch. I truly believe it. Not the garbage yeah. pill. Don't get it twisted. Garbage, garbage pal kids had their own thing. Chucky. No, he was modeled after the, after the My Buddy doll. Oh, oh, yes, I know. But also, I think the My Buddy doll was just the older brother of the Cabbage Patch kids. That's probably correct. They are related. I remember the My Buddy. By the way, this is Mean Girls Interrupted. I'm John. Oh, movie review podcast. I'm Travis. But I mean, I remember like the the old school, like my brother got a My Buddy doll. And it was like the same height as him at that point. And it was just like this innocent little kid in, in overalls with like, uh, it, with like punched hair. So like there's that, like real hair. And it, it like, I remember like the commercials was like kind of sad and that like this, <laughs> this little boy got a best friend for his birthday and he was like so excited and they did everything together. They went down the slide together they rode in like a little Hot Wheels car together and he was just like so excited. But I mean, like what happens whenever he outgrows the doll? I just, you throw that doll right in the trash. Uh, just get <laughs> rid of it. So uh, I want to, I actually want to go back to when, to when you said it is kind of sad. Like they truly were like, hi, for all of you parents out there who A, have a sink you have one child yeah here's a friend for your child also just so you know your kid is a loser <laughs> he has no <laughs> friends except this my buddy doll and uh, <laughs> do not socialize him buy him yeah. a doll and keep him weird forever yeah and then maybe he'll like project personality onto the doll and so if you ever so it's like suddenly gets weird where like 
the doll is like at the dinner table. And if you're like, hey, honey, why don't you put the doll away? It's like, no. Uh, but buddy. it was the doll that said and he it. stays. Yeah, yeah, and he stays. That is that is child's play. It's child's play. That mom did it to herself, honestly. She was like, I'm yeah. not going to take my kid to daycare. Uh, I'm going to give him a doll. And that doll said, I will take care of. So Megan is just Chucky, right? Megan is Megan is definitely Charles. Um, and no offense, but listen, it's I, I live for Megan. I live for Megan. I Do don't we think live the, for Megan. I don't think the movie was incredible, but I love the idea of Megan and how she took over and yeah. became an instant gay icon. She was an instant gay icon. and. A TikTok star. The thing is, though, is like they really could have just not released the PG-13 version if they were going to release the director's cut. So anyway. stupid. It's just to get all those teenagers in seats. You know what I, I mean? I know. But you know what? Teenagers are going to go to rated R movies. They're all blowing each other in the theater at a PG-13 movie anyway. Right. No, I was denied access to a rated R movie. You were? Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Back who in the day, whenever the, I was a teenager, who was this monster? Well, we did. We were in a Mormon town, so that checks. This was in Tucson. Oh, that's not realistic. They were like, and you know, a movie it was Queen of the Damned. Really? They were mad about that. <laughs> yeah. They were like, you cannot see Aaliyah. It's like, like but living her, living for it, feeling oh, herself. No. She, she ate. She actually, there's no one else who could play that role. I know. She was the only I truly part. don't think anyone else could play that role. Yeah, she's like, so they denied me access to a truly terrible movie. So what movie did you see? I don't remember. I think I just laughed. You were like, oh, dang. Oh, tits. Oh, um, rats. <laughs> so, um, so today we're talking about a film, a horror movie. We are talking about a horror movie. So we're on. We we are on brand right now. <laughs> we are branding on hard. And yes. so <laughs> um, it's it's called The First Omen. Not to be mistaken for The First Omen, which came out in 1970, whatever. Yeah. Not Was that Omen. Gregory Peck in there? I don't. Honestly, I have no clue. Someone. Anyway. This is the uh, first Omen. The That's first the whole title. one. It's and a it, prequel. And it came out in alert. 2024. Yeah. 2024. It is. It's also uh, produced by um, a lovely production company. Uh, called... I saw the, no, I saw the name. I saw the name on there. Yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, they also produced um, our... One of my, my favorite horror movies to come out of late, which is um, I'm blanking on everything right now. It's That's uh, okay. John. I'm right there. Hellraiser, with you. the reboot. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. They also did it. I, I believe that their names is Phantom Four and uh, films. And I've I've met with them twice and have in association them. with wasn't it? Who is it? Uh, uh, was it a lot of other people? <laughs> I think it's like, let's see. Do, do, do. I'm going to pull this up here real quick. Um, it's not 20th century, is it? It is. It is 20th century. So it's a Disney, okay. it's a Disney movie. Which is so <laughs> if you crazy. think about it, which is wild. Uh, let's see here. What am I looking for? Uh, First Omen. And it stars uh, Nell Tiger Free. That is a real name. That is a hot name. Isn't it? We're, we're all about hot names here. If you come in with a hot name, we live. We, we stand immediately do people still we say stan yeah, yeah we just did okay cool we're and, standing uh, we're standing uh nell tiger free as margaret yes and yes, then yes. and some other people including bill nye 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 um so uh yeah 20th century studios distributed it it's a production company um but also this is mostly most where are you you stupid little slut um oh wait sorry i'm like i'm going down the rabbit hole here oh that's be, okay i mean things. it's pride month yeah phantom four films is like the the producer um and 
a lovely little company and i i hope to work with them in the future uh you will um and you're uh, gonna <laughs> but they did produce also a uh, phantom four they produced the hellraiser one and uh also um that the night house that we like oh yeah listen all of you out there go watch the night house for real yeah the night house is really good the um, night house is surprisingly I'm, i shouldn't even say surprisingly because that sounds like really disparaging also no. spoilers we do spoil this movie if you guys want to watch spoiled. it it's on hulu it is yeah. on hulu yeah. so you can see it now you can you can pause this episode and go watch it or or what you can do is you can listen to this in one ear and then listen to the movie <laughs> in the other. Yeah, and it won't be confusing at all. No. But, um, but yeah, so um, they, uh, they're they doing another movie um, with that same uh, David Bruckner who did Night House and Hellraiser. They're doing another movie with him, which um, I'm not allowed to talk about, but I'll tell you off camera. But, oh, uh, uh, excuse yeah, me. Super exciting. Is but, it? I think so. Just based off of like the title and like uh, what we know Hellraiser was and what we oh, so knew you're not Night House was. Oh, yeah. John has insider secrets and you guys don't get to know them, but I do. <laughs> yeah. If I if I remember to ask him at the end, actually, yeah, because I there's know, many right? times that I've when you've had like some you've had some tea to spill and I, I always know. forget. Me too. It's just crazy. But so I will ask you at the end. OK, cool. If I but um, I lovely gals um but uh also talking about phantom four films and the first omen i noticed like a through line with their movies they go dark they go dark they go dark they go gory yes. and we did get some gore in this one i will say okay so I love that you're talking about this because I was going to save this for the end, but I'm going to say it right now. Do it. So the first Omen was very nearly given an NC-17 rating largely for the disturbing birthing sequence. But after resubmitting the film to the MPA four times, wow. like how many times do you have to cut it? I know. So with the problematic scene still included with every resubmission, the MPA eventually relented when it was cut down from its original 13 seconds to its final form, receiving an R rating. Wow. So I want to know because this one, what this was one in those pushes, other 13? I know, seconds. right? Probably what we saw here because this goes there. It goes pretty wild. It goes there, but also filmed beautifully. There were some very, very nice sequences in this, which we will discuss later in the end because I have one specifically, the framing of it. There was a yeah. scene with the framing that I was like, oh, oh said, which one? Uh, so I can't. OK, I will. Oh, do we say, OK, I'm not going to save it. So it's when Maggie <laughs> is praying after like one of I, I can't remember specifically which scene it was some because some wild things happen. But she's praying and she's like, I'm precious on this. I belong in this and this and this. And it's panning out. And behind her, you have all of these candles that are burning. Yeah. But these candles, the way they're placed, look like teeth. Oh, my goodness. And it yeah. pans out to look like these teeth are about to. Oh, you know what? If this is one of those rewatch movies, you got to so, rewatch And it I noticed that. And thing. I was like, this kind of looks like the mouth. Uh, and even the candles look like teeth. They look like teeth hanging on a string because the mm. way they're formed and the way the candle drips, because it is on a string and the way it drips, it's creating this thing that looks like the roots of a tooth. Oh my gosh. So it's kind of cool. That's a really good one. There was a lot of little details in the mise-en-scene and yeah, it's, it's just from the start, it's extremely stylish in a very original way. And um, when they put the black bags, th that black bag on her head and she's breathing in and all you can see is the teeth. And yeah. it looks like when she's breathing in, you just see like the form of her teeth in her mouth and it's very yeah. skeletal. I'm and like, cool. it's very uh, disturbing and unnerving. Very much so. And yeah. So good on Phantom Four for taking risks. Yeah. Um, Should we get wait? Let's do oh, it. Oh, keep no, no, no. How much did this movie cost? Oh crap. Oh. So according to IMDb Pro, the budget was $30 million. 
Um, and it grossed worldwide fifty three point seven million. Okay, so it made its money back. That's a good thing. Made its money back. I think it was up against another non Catholicism movie called Immaculate, starring Sydney Sweeney. Unfortunately, yes, I did not watch that. But maybe we should actually. I think the first woman may have come out first, and then Immaculate came out. But everybody, Sydney Sweeney's on one. You know what I mean? She is. I, I she's like, are you going to go see the first Omen starring Nell Tiger free? Or are you going to go see another nun movie uh, starring Sydney Sweeney's heavy naturals? Uh, listen, heavy naturals. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That, they that was both also, have heavy naturals. That was a play on a joke. Yeah. Uh, from an SNL sketch. Uh -huh. Did you see that one? I didn't, but I know <laughs> what you're referring to. Yeah. It was like, I think it was more like a, uh, like the Bowen Yang is straight one and Sydney Sweeney's hosting. Uh -huh. And and she's like, What are you into? And he's like, Blondes, heavy naturals. <laughs> <laughs> because I've actually seen heavy naturals used in titles on Instagram. No way, really. Uh -huh. People just use it as a caption. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which I think is so funny. That's crazy. <laughs> so stupid it's actually hilarious <laughs> that's an actual term uh-huh heavy natural oh, no thank you <laughs> uh, so it's directed by arkasha stevenson um who did arkasha davis there we arkasha go. there's davis <laughs> arkasha davis stevenson uh who's done uh various different things um directed that tv miniseries um at least one episode of that the brand new cherry flavor which is like crazy did you ever watch oh, that no yeah so um this is like a sort of like a coming out of the gates uh big horror movie for that so cool i like that yeah um so uh where do we start with this where do we start with this italy do we go to so italy we start with this is a prequel to the, the omen the omen the which is just called omen. omen is it called omen i think it's called omen i think it's called omen it's a prequel to omen which came out in 1973 so you can watch this first and then yeah. it jumps right in to omen into damien territory yes yes yeah yes. and then you have like the omen 2 and then you have like the remake starring Liev schreiber you have there's so many there's actually six stuff. versions of this movie i believe it's crazy so yeah it's it's entering land before time territory <laughs> land before time you don't know what universe you're in honestly um, though i think the fast series has everyone beat as far as sequels go yeah it's out of control i don't know about that but, but okay so we do start in italy yeah italy is is where we are and it's rome to be specific i believe yes and it uh, it's very much home of the Catholics, if, if, you, if you didn't know already. Yeah. And uh, this movie does have a storyline that is rooted in Catholicism and the devil and God and, and religion. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. Which is interesting to me. But I mean, I so we, we start out with um, uh, it's we're at an airport, which I thought was pretty stylish. <laughs> it was actually a stylish airport we're we're back in the day by the way this is a period piece this takes place in the 70s something like that yeah and so uh which i thought the details were really good let's talk about we'll get there but there are a couple pieces of the wardrobe like when the girls from the nunnery is what we'll call it yeah uh their little blue they're like their blue outfits that they all wore. Yeah, the silhouette was good. I, I was, was like, kind of obsessed. With I was too. I was like, what? Like the silhouette was, is crazy with like the little, like the little half skirt outline on the top, like the yes. little panel. Yeah, I was like, okay, work. It was. They were cool. They had some pretty cool little outfits. I mean, most of the time they were habits. They were good habits, not bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whoa! But watch out. Um, they were good habits. Um, so Nell Tiger Free is our protagonist. Margaret is her name. Uh, Sister Mary Margaret. Um, and she's. <laughs> I don't know. And so she is. She's very young. She's flying in. She's an American in Italy, and she. Uh, is so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to like she's come here to take her 
nun vows. Yeah, the and, veil, something about the veil. Yeah, Who even yeah. It's like her initiation into being a full on nun and serving the Lord and stuff. Um, and we we get a little bit of a backstory starring Daddy from the Witch. He's yeah. a priest. Mm-hmm. Um, he he is. There's a whole sequence where he is he's on the search. He wants to stop the Antichrist from coming. Yeah. And we all he, do. What a mess. Yeah. I mean, like, would you want hell on earth, Travis? It feels like hell <laughs> it on earth. It feels like already. it might be there already. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, he's just like, his mission is like, you know what? He's like, we've gone too far. So, he's in the mix somehow. And he's like, yeah. we got to make it stab. We and do then, get a pretty cool opening sequence, though. We do. But we the, won't go into it. I don't want to go into it. You guys yeah. watch it. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, disturbing and in, in, in a fun way. Um, and so like, yeah, so we know that's happening. And then uh, um, Nell Tiger Free, she's just like, I'm going to be a nun. And it's pretty amazing. And she is uh, set up with with the uh, the, the head mama. <laughs> We're just going to call her head mommy. Yeah, and head mommy. Head mommy. Not at all an innuendo. Yeah, it's no, it's not. And uh, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so she's like shown the orphanage that she's gonna be like a nun at. It's a big sprawling nun, all all girls, and uh they're all running amok. They're all orphans and to destined to be nuns themselves, I think. I maybe I'm wrong, but uh yeah, so they're just like she's like, you know what, this is pretty cool. I love this place. It's all so old and beautiful. And then Nell Tiger Free stumbles upon this other room with this strange girl. Yeah. Um, I will just call her strange girl because I forgot yeah. her name. Did you? Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, 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 no. I did remember her name. So you're right. I did forget it because I can't recall it. So, uh, yes. Or strange girl for context. So she's yeah. strange. It's Samara. Samara? We'll call her Samara because of my first initial she is kind reaction of grudge, was... She's grudge-like. She, she, that bitch is rolling out of a well. She is rolling out of a well and out of a TV yep. uh, screen near you. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. So she's, um, so, so she's, Samara. Samara, she's just like really weird and crazy. She's like drawing stuff and she's isolated from the other girls. And You do know her. how I feel. I have told you many times. I hate the kids drawing things most of the time yeah i know it's it's but it's, the, it's an overused trope at best i think within this con within the context of this sure fine good yeah i guess you know what i want instead of like a little tiny child drawing creepy things i want a full adult um person I don't know where I'm going. With that. I want to l- listen. If you all remember light I, brights out there, do you remember light brights? I do. Oh, yeah. I want a kid making a creepy thing on a light bright. <laughs> and just like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, switching yeah, yeah. the lights around yep. and then like turning it That's on. That's the only way this is going to work for me. And it has to be like. Or etch a sketch. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yes. An etch a sketch, oh girl. Yes. <laughs> We're in the 1970s. And nope, yes, nope. there is an etch a sketch. I see your etch a sketch and I raise you a Mr. Wooly. <laughs> Oh no, a uh, Mr. <laughs> Wooly. Yes, do you remember Mr. That? Wooly? Mr. No. Wooly. Mr. Wooly was the toy where it came with the first like Apple pencil, except for it was magnetized, <laughs> and you had to draw his hair on top oh, of it. Yeah. The- <laughs> That's crazy. So I need I need scary drawings on the top of Mr. Wooly's head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we'll see how how talented you are at making that creepy. Yeah, you, yeah, you little you. bitch. um so samara she's like she's like hey now uh tiger free i'm not really into what you're doing here and trying to coax me out of my little corner but sure i'll do it and then whenever i get to you i'm gonna grab your face real hard and i'm gonna lick you (laughs) boy does she ever and then she's like oh and then she's like but there's like this moment where nell tiger free is like really goes dark and it's like get the fuck off of me oh she does she and really then, does and then as soon as the 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 head mommy comes in uh she's like oh <laughs> this little fucking bastard was <laughs> just 
a little too much for me right now. Yeah. And then she's like, why do you keep her separate? She's like, well, um, Samara, like uh, she definitely harms other children. And yeah, she's she, scary. Yeah, she's <laughs> if you haven't taken a gander. Yeah, it's like, did you see her? Uh, like, do you have eyes? No, like she face? does lick people. <laughs> she she licks people constantly and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, which I imagine goes down at a nunnery. Oh. Do you imagine? I can't imagine her. <laughs> <laughs> And so Nell is just like set up in her um uh, she she set up in an apartment with a roommate. Yes. Um what was her name again? What are what are we gonna call her? The roommate. Oh, we're gonna call her uh let's just call her what's something fun? What's a what's a f- Ashley? Ashley, bad influence Shelly. Yes, 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 yes. But her <laughs> friends all know her as Trashley. Yeah, Trashley. Yeah, Trashley. That's a good one. Out. That's a good one. So Trashley is the roommate, but she's also a nun to be uh, taking the veil or whatever. And so, um, they're, so they're like getting to know each other and like um, we get like a mysterious jump scare with like the clothes and stuff. And then, uh, but uh, so it's spooky. They keep up, they keep up the spook factor in the movie. Yeah. And with a little bit of a jump scare, which I thought was pretty effective. The thing I was like, is, ooh, though- creepy. Yeah. It was creepy I, as far as like it actually scaring me. Uh, a, don't ever stand your clothes up because when you wake up at night <laughs> and you've had a little bit too much to drink. It looks it, like a person. It's going to be a person in your eyes. Yeah. You're going to be like, ooh, am I going crazy or is that real? Right. But I did like it. It was very ominous. It was good. And um, yeah. Ominous even. Oh, me. Oh my. Sorry. Okay, please continue. <laughs> um yeah. uh, what happens next? Oh yeah. So, so Trashley yeah. is like, hey girl, hey. So I know that you've given your V card up to Jesus, but <laughs> what I need you to do is put on this very, very ratty wig. I pulled this out of the gutter just for you, and you're gonna throw <laughs> it on. And you and I are gonna go out to the bar. One last time before we can never do it ever again. Right. We're going to sin tonight. Yeah, we are. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go out. We're going to talk to some boys. Maybe even dance with them a little bit. Uh-huh. Maybe even weird them out slightly frequently. <laughs> but mostly. And like, you're going to be weird at a table and I'm going to be living my life because I'm trashly. <laughs> <laughs> because you're in Trashley's land. Yes, you are. Yeah. You see that trash over there? It's me. Lee. It's Trashley. Me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's me. That's my second home. My That's true my home. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's a raccoon, actually, in a in a habit. <laughs> a raccoon in a habit. A raccoon in a habit. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry. Oh, I mean, I mean, so, I'm just thinking that, I'm seeing that visual. Raccoon habit. <laughs> so what happens is, uh, um, Trashley's she disappears for a minute, and now it's Megan's turn. We're calling her Megan. Yeah. So Megan. it's Margaret. So Sister Megan, Mary Margaret, Margaret, Megan Margaret. Yeah. Polly. She hooks so not just hooks up but she starts talking to this really really good looking italian man named Paolo, and um things escalate that we don't get to see yeah because it cuts to black and boy does she wake up with her hair all splayed out her hair is see okay i have something to say about this please do i didn't like that I actually thought that was a weird choice. I think it was also a weird choice because it took me out of the reality. John, do you know I was what like, it reminded nobody, me of? Nobody has their hair out like that. I, listen, for all of you out there who know, <laughs> and John knows too, I cannot remember the runway show it was where they had positioned the models in beds and they oh, had put their hair dang. splayed up on this bed and yeah. she was wearing like this comforter looking situation. John. I was transported immediately to like spring, summer, 2004. Yeah. The collection of whatever hair on a pillow, because I did not like that choice. I'm so serious. It, no, I, f- I feel you on that. And uh, similarly, you know what else I hate in fashion or that, that thing, that statement thing that happened was 
a woman in a dress with a dress on the outside. Did yeah, you yeah. remember that? Uh, it's like oh, a, they have the dress with like a little applique dress kind of drooped onto the side. It's yeah, like two yeah, yeah. dresses. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So bad hair. We're introduced to bad hair and then a, a spider that crawls across her face, which grossed me out. On her? No. It was a jumping spider that was on her eyelash. That's where it was coming from? I didn't realize. Oh. On the eyelash. Oh, wow. And nothing spells ominous. Then a spider on your face. Then a spider on your eyelash. Have you ever had a spider on your face? I actually have. And I wanted to bring that up. Please do. So one night when I was asleep, this was when I still lived at my parents' house. And we also had a snake in the wall and mice because there was a hole in the wall. And we never got it (laughs) taken care of because poor. And so... One night, I remember being dead asleep and something hitting me right in the face. And John, the way my hand, the way my hand backhanded this, and then I hear a thud. I got up and turned the light on. John, it was the biggest wolf spider. Granted, it was a wolf spider, but still a spider. Oh, no. And it had hit the back of my brother's bed. And it was like upside down at that point because it hit with such a velocity. Because at that point in my life, oh, I'd already been stung by a sea wolf spider. I, I'd already been stung by a scorpion twice in my bed. Yeah. So I already knew this was some tomfoolery coming from the insect world. I was like, I, I already know this. Like, we need to spray you guys. I don't even know what it would have been worse. What it, a roach or a spider, both. But anyway, that's oh. my story of a spider landing on my face. Yeah. So there no, we are. Oh no, no. That could have that could have ended a lot worse for you. Yeah, in the mouth. Oh no. But anyway, so back to spider eyelashes. Speaking of spider eyelashes, do you remember that girl from high school that we used to call spider bangs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, did, you, did you forget about her? Because I think about her quite often. I think about it too, because I remember her hair was make, so crazy. You would make up really creative names for people that I didn't know about until you would say them. And then I <laughs> laughed so hard whenever you said spider bangs. I was like, oh my gosh. Because it, it makes so much sense. It's uh, it's so much sense. It's so, yeah. It was so too accurate. I was like, she, that makes the most sense. She had plucked the legs off of daddy long legs and just glued them to her forehead. <laughs> it was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Also barn legs. Remember barn legs? Cause the way his legs looked. <laughs> so like I was the person. Of a barn. <laughs> yes. Like if you looked at him from, a, if you looked at him from like the front or the back, this, this, the, is, this is bully culture. No, I know. I know. But I never bullied the person. I no, just, they were just private associations that you made only because i never knew their names and i had to make something up (laughs) (laughs) spider bangs i I do think about sometimes 20 john people called me fag in school and so it's fine exactly you know what you win some you lose some spider bangs was not a nice person no spider bangs was actually kind of a bitch (laughs) she was a bitch so fine Uh, she got lucky anyway (laughs) <laughs> sorry you guys we got triggered by high school um <laughs> who doesn't get triggered by high school so back to high school in a uh, nun's house so we have yes 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 so she wakes up it's the morning after and she's there's like, so much sweat on her bed so much sweat so much sweat like almost like like a almost horror like been movie's level. by a demon <laughs> right right, right, All right. Night. spoiler um, uh so she wakes up and she's just like you know what what happened last night, Trashley? And then Trashley says, oh, well, you got a little crazy. And I had to like pull you off of him. Blah, 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 blah. And then um, she's like, so she, what? So Margaret thinks she's talking about Paolo. Yeah. yeah. But Trashley is not talking about Paolo. Yeah. She was getting, she was getting dicked down by the beast. Yeah. By the jackal. Yeah. The jackal. Which whenever we see it, I'm just like, oh, creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but anyway, also, we go. If you're into furries, though. Oh, you would live. You guys you would, would love You would live your best life. <laughs> your best furry fantasy? Welcome. Yeah, your scariest furry fantasy is yeah. here in this yeah. movie, The First Omen. Yeah. So. We're now back. We are now back at the nun's house. 
what do we call this place? Is um, it a true orphanage? A convent. Or so we're at a convent. That is it's, it's an correct. orphanage. It's an orphanage. Yeah. So run by nuns. The, yes, run by nuns. Yeah. And so we get into a little bit of like a scary, ooky, spooky, a Bridget. It is. We are abridging at this point in time. We so are. we go from basically this is like a movie montage, but us talking. Do you want to hit it with me? Yeah. So you let want to me... volley this back and forth. OK, so I'm going to do the I'm going to do the start. So I'm going to serve and then you're going to and then you're going to serve it back. Yeah, it's going to be like that movie Challengers that you haven't seen yet. Yes, but I'm going to. So <laughs> so here's what happens. We get back to the convent and okay. sitting outside is Angelica, who you guys get to see being weird on a stairway in the beginning of the movie yeah. now angelica is already you can tell she is dead behind the eyes girl is she, there's something up she's broken so, she, oh very much so so she is sitting with samara and she's like beep bop boop while samara draws this, <laughs> draws this thing and samara shows um this picture of a pregnant samara who oh. drew it she's like there's a boy in me and like, Margaret, you know what? there's always a boy in us. There's always a boy in us. So if Margaret, you play your cards right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Pride Month after all. You can have one yeah. any time of the day. So, yep. so Margaret looks at the other nun and she goes, um, hi, Angelica. I don't really think that's appropriate. And so Angelica <laughs> takes the paper away and then stuffs it uh, wherever <laughs> in her habit. And so Angelica proceeds to get up, then kisses Margaret on the mouth for some reason and disappears. So in this moment, all of the children are playing Ring Around the Rosie, Pocket Full of Posey, which we all know was about um, dead, dead, plague dead stuff. things. And, and what you don't know is up at the top of this convent stands Angelica, now covered in water. So you think. You're like, why is so wet up there? And all of the children look up and Angelica's like, hey, and they start waving at her. And then Angelica lights herself Surprise. on fire. Yes, lights herself on fire, and then she uh, obviously drops from the ledge, and there's a noose around her neck. But a plot le- twist. J- t- plot twist. Yeah, talk <laughs> about it. So she, uh, so uh, um, Nell Tiger Free is just looking up in horror, and she's just like, oh my god, what just happened? That's crazy. All the kids are freaking out, by the way, rightfully so. Yeah, kids are freaking out. I feel like I wouldn't be so external about my freak out as a child, but okay. Like, I'm like, I'm just going to stare at this traumatizing thing and fully internalize it. Yes. And then harbor it for years and years. Yeah. But it's, it's more, it's more cinematic <laughs> if there's children screaming. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. And then so Nell Tiger Freeze just like, what just happened? And then and she then, goes to take her lunch break in the park where she meets, the, don't forget, she meets yeah. the, the priest. Yeah. She meets the priest who's a daddy from a daddy from the witch yeah so now continue um so uh yeah so he's just like hey look there's something you're talking about um the antichrist it might be a thing that you're involved with and so (laughs) and she's just like oh what are you talking about she's like he's like that little tiny girl just think about it she's spooky she bad things happen around her evil things even and also if you're kind of doubtful still uh look for the mark of the beast which we all know is a 666 combination yes and she's like and he's like you know what you nail tiger free can be like my eyes on the inside because i'm sort of like shunned right now um because i'm like good and stuff and she's like but why would they do that and he's like well think about it because um we're in modern times uh, there, there's intelligence afoot and people are unsubscribing from the religion channel. Yeah, they and are. Especially in the Catholic church, which has been a powerful institution politically and socially and people controlly for a millennia. And what would you do to keep that power? You would. Naturally. <laughs> you would naturally, logically. Uh, your first, your first thought in your brain would be birth the Antichrist to wreak havoc on the world so that peep terrified people were to, will irrationally turn back to religion. Yeah. And then. Which seems so counterproductive. <laughs> it seemed, but it's how you keep power. 
It is how you keep you power. You have by... to gaslight the people. You have to have the devil on a leash, girl. You gotta have the devil on a leash. In a harness. Yeah, devil because on a harness. The devil... They can they can go, they can go. Devil in they a can't harness. Go far. <laughs> devil in a harness, everyone. Devil in a harness. Um devil on a leash would basically be Alexander Skarsgård in uh, Infinity Pool. Yes, 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 yes. That was uh, that was very queer. And but also it. put him in a harness. Oh yeah. So now we're now we're back. Yeah, it's it's not for like anything sexual. It's because just to take the pressure off the neck. Yes, because the neck sometimes it's yeah. so hard to hold up. You want to whenever you tug on him, you just want to make sure that he's nice and comfortable. <laughs> yes, you really just don't want to create any bruises. <laughs> yeah, bruises. I mean, yeah, which is crazy that people walk around dogs on a leash attached to the neck. It just seems crazy to me. Yeah, that dog. That dog can escape at any moment. They will get out of that collar. <laughs> but but, also, it just seems so inhumane. No, that too. Also, yes, of course. But they will wriggle free. <laughs> yeah. uh, trust me, I've been there and I've done it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, In the before times. In the before times. But hey, um, so now Tiger Free is like, hey, look, I'm glad that we had this coffee together. But I'm just going to go back to that um, orphanage and just... And just like, maybe don't talk to me anymore. And um, so she does. But then she also starts to think and suspect that a little orphan. Um, little orphan Samara. Little orphan Samara. She is uh, strange. And then there's a thing in the museum where they go on a field trip to the museum. And um, she sees Samara with an apparition. Being comforted, no less, by a burnt apparition of Angelica. Of Angelica, who's dead, obviously. Yeah. And then, like, they, there, it culminates with it. There's like a whole student riots out in the courtyard, and like, we got to get out of here. They bring all the girls, and then there's like tear gas involved, and then there's like an explosion. And then there's the devil. And then there's the devil that lays its little eyes on Nell. Yes, it does. And then she starts writhing and screaming and freaking out causing a scene and then um um head mama head mommy she yeah, head she, mommy. she sees nell acting crazy and was and she's like okay maybe you're not ready for the veil yeah. um so uh we're just gonna have you work at the orphanage totally cool but you're not gonna take your vows because and you can't yet, because things are things are troubling in your mind. The things are troubling in your mind. And also, um, we might have ulterior motives for you in the future. Right. And so, Nell, uh, uh, volleying back to you. So, Nell is like, <laughs> yo, this is so crazy. I don't like this at all. So, what happens is... Nell goes to Trashley's uh, veil ceremony because Trashley is yeah. like, uh, you know what? I'm ready for Jesus now because my last one night stand was so bad. Um, <laughs> and so she, so she's like, you know what? I'm ready. So while this is happening at this point, Margaret's like, Hey, this is my opportunity to go find some paperwork that I now believe is dealing with the devil. So she finds a secret hole in the wall behind the dead eyes of painted cherubs, which is so weird. And she, <laughs> and she opens up that wall just like that movie that we watched where she has to scurry down into the, the caverns where mother lives. Mama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that called? Uh, 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 mama. No, it's <laughs> mama. You know which one it is. Uh, heavy natural. <laughs> Heavy naturals. So <laughs> the barbarian. barbarian. So she, so she barbarians her way down. <laughs> yeah. The scariest. If, if you've ever seen a movie ever, nothing ever good comes from a secret corridor. A secret that... corridor that leads down. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. So she finds a bunch of files, and everything that the priest told her is true. And she's and like. They're all named Samara. They are. And she's like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of shit here. And boy, and they are files on on baby infants. Because what we failed to say is that this orphanage also uh, caters to women who need health care and need babies birthed for free. Yeah. So that's a little tiny detail we forgot to. <laughs> so basically what we're saying is this is not unlike a puppy farm. It is a demon farm. It is a demon mill. And they're just like milling out these yeah, antichrists. Yeah, puppy like mill. There mill. it is. 
Yeah, puppy mill. Because there is a jackal involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is notoriously a dog. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. A dog who does it missionary? <laughs> I, you know. Weird. Just, yeah. Huh. I mean, keep it missionary, right? You're in the church. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, so anyway, uh, so she's going through all these files and like they all have pictures of like these stillborn babies who are a mangled, gnarled, monstrously deformed things. Yeah. And they're not even human children. They are. They, they, this they, movie really goes there. They're not human children. They are. There's something very, very messed up about these babies. Yeah. So it's proof that they are indeed at this place in time trying to birth an antichrist. And for some reason, all of the all of the babies are failing. They're just like defunct from the factory. Yeah. The factory. <laughs> they are the, the factory. The factory. <laughs> just like. <laughs> They're just coming out crazy. Uh, do, you to say the least. do you ever have a baby? <laughs> They're just coming out crazy. So they do. Yeah. They're coming out crazy and dead. So I think what happens after this is I can't remember. Oh, she, she does. Teams, get, she teams with them. She, 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 so what happens is she gets caught with these files as she's leaving and she gets put into the dark room, the bad room. Right, right, right. And she sees Angelica in there who's screaming in her face until she's saved by a priest who's like, I'm here to save you. We got to get out of here now. Let's go. He's like, I'm also super young like you. And yeah. um, I don't really agree with what's going on here. Yeah. So I'm going to swift you away to, to uh, witch daddy. Daddy from the witch. Yeah. And we're going to come together. And we're going to think about a plan. And, uh, and so they go through the files. They're going through their little mystery thing. And then they're like, oh, wait, hold up. So you're telling me that the Antichrist has. So they're, they birthed a baby from the jackal. And then they are going to get this this jackal the successful jack jackal baby to re have sex with the jackal to birth the antichrist is that the logic yeah it, i mean this is like a russian stacking doll family it's a russian stacking doll family <laughs> it's incestuous oh very much that um because it's like the jackal is impregnating its own, its own offspring child. to yeah. make a, another offspring another offspring that is not uh that is the antichrist yeah um so while they're putting the puzzle pieces together they're like wait so it's not samara even though we did see the mark of the beast on her we're realizing that the actual mark of the beast is on the head in the forehead instead of in the mouth and the successful the successful jackal baby yeah um is alive and well and they're like who out of all these files who is it it can't be the samara little girl it can't be because her is hers is on the roof of the mouth like you said it, it has to be this one here that has the mark of the beast on its scalp covered with hair and then Nell tiger freeze like oh wait a minute i a have hair. Little, i have hair <laughs> <laughs> and I also had a really good time the other night and I'm suddenly remembering my blackout. Don't you hate that when you're like, oh my God, did I have sex with the devil? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, did I get raw dogged by a jackal? Um, <laughs> so, and so she's just like, has this whole moment. We see it go down. Turns out little orphan Trashley. Yeah. She is in on the mix. She is. And so is the 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 hot Italian guy that she Paolo. Paolo, Paolo, who like she hooked up with, who also meets a an untimely demise earlier. We won't go into it, but that was cool. We're <laughs> not going into crazy. his death. I loved his. It was so cool. Okay. That was worth the price of admission. Oh, truthfully, I was here for it. Yeah, that's why I once that to happened, it. I said, Yeah, sure. Although, you know what? You hug that half body with the entrails falling out. Yeah, hug it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so she is like coming to a realization that that night she was taken she was blacked out and taken uh by the people she trusts to a room 
and the black thing was put over her face and a noose was put around her neck. And then the jackal did indeed caress her body with these weird fingers. Yeah. And then, and then did put a baby inside her. But yes. Which uh, apparently gestation with a demon, it happens very quickly. Like in almost like, a like week, basically a few days. Yeah. Whenever it only starts, whenever you realize that, like, oh my God, <laughs> it's, it's, totally it's like pregnant by the devil. It's like rabies. When you know you have it, when you start showing symptoms, it's too late, girl. It's too late. It's already coming out. It's too um, late. You're already foaming out the mouth, <laughs> which she does. She um, does. She rides and does. She rides. And so um, I will and, say I did like that scene. There's a car crash. Yeah. We won't get into it, but she survives okay. it and she starts her water breaks in up in the streets of Italy. And she has this. If one, your water was to break with the Antichrist, what better place could you imagine that happening then? John, Rome? you know what I would have done? I would have been prepared <laughs> because missed opportunity. I'm Now I'm saying this would happen in modern times where eBay exists because I would have done it over a mason jar and I would have, <laughs> <laughs> and I would have sold it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> My water would have broke right into a mason jar and I said, this <laughs> listen, try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's Etsy. what I admire about you, Travis. Etsy girl. You're industrious. <laughs> You're an innovator <laughs> at your core. <laughs> I listen, I'm all about a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so devil's no, into details, girl. <laughs> Literally. And this baby's name is Details. Um <laughs> so <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine if that's what this movie is going to be the next like celebrity? It like culminated into his name as Details instead of Damien. <laughs> yeah. And his name, Details. details. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, anyway, so uh, Mel is uh, captured by this, uh, this uh, cult, which is a religious cult called Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, and she is back in the space where she was uh, impregnated by the beast. But this time she is here to give birth to the Antichrist. Yeah, and she um, is. big, long set piece scene, uh, medical surgical stuff is happening. They give her cesarean and they pull not one, but two babes out that belly. And then one is Gal. Good dough. No, <laughs> one is Gal. Good dough. <laughs> <laughs> one is a girl and then one is a boy and everybody's like oh thank god the patriarchy can live on and then um, <laughs> so, um so yeah and then uh they take the um so nell does attempt to kill the baby with a scalpel but then it is, starts crying and it's like girl i don't let it fool you <laughs> those are crocodile tears there's a soft Starts spot off. in the back of the head you are holding a scalpel you need to get with it also you don't even need to bother with that scalpel just toss that thing against the wall Done. honestly right right, right, right. <laughs> she could have grabbed it by the leg and just thrown it that thing is three seconds old its bones don't even know what to do it doesn't even know it's alive yet just end it yeah. but that, it's larva at this point true it's just barely not a fetus yeah it's like it doesn't even have a consciousness at this point in time so her hesitation to kill this demonic baby was weird to me yeah but as a mother i do get it she was like oh she no. was a, she was she was pregnant for like two seconds she was but also when she realized she was like oh that's my dna uh mixed twice yeah so now like we're that connected is, twice that this is my brother and my and, son yeah and she was like that's kind of hot yeah this is so, <laughs> she's like that's so cool <laughs> really cool and i can kind of live with this um <laughs> so she does not kill the baby she is usurped and stabbed by trashley Tr no less trash trashley <laughs> Always coming out of the gutter with a scalpel. Right. Typical. She couldn't have just thrown a bad wig on her and call it a day. She's going to be like, this, <laughs> yeah. this is what you get. <laughs> that would have been really funny. She doesn't even stab her. She just throws a wig on her head and it's like the humiliation alone kills her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I've lost. Um, so Trashley uh, stabs her. She's left for dead. Um, 
as is the 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 female baby. Um, uh, and they set the thing ablaze. Um, even the jackal goes up in flames. That's so rude. So rude. He was a service. He was just to there to do community. his job. He didn't do anything wrong. And what are you gonna do if this D- Damien dies? Yeah. Whenever you have Dam- no jackal. Where do you even catch a jackal, John? At where do you Kmart? get a where do you get a massive hell demon? I want to know how where they conjured it? it. Yeah. Anyway, that's a that's for oh, they, they birthed day. a jackal too, by the way. But from who? Whatever Bene Gesserit stuff is going on. It's, it's true. It's true, 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 true. Insane. Because you see, remember that scene whenever it was she Marjorie was, Taylor Greens. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greens <laughs> cold, oh, <straight>. nasty, claw like <laughs> hand protruding from an agape vagina, which is something that happens in this movie. Which is crazy. That was a crazy shot. John, oh, those like, rat claws crawling out. That, that was a jackal baby. Yeah, it was. So there's more jackals afoot. They really need to stop. They need to stop birthing jackals. They're gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so, well, <laughs> the epilogue goes as such. She is whisked away by Samara. Samara, little girl, is doing good now. Because she's like, you know what? You're a beast just like me. She's so, like, you know um, what? My drawings were bad. What I'm going to do is now spend my life taking care of you. Yeah. And so she, uh, so, so me, my sister, <laughs> my other sister, and my mom, who is all, so it's all sisters. It's all sisters uh, related to the jackal. Um, yeah. And they, uh, so she is the three sisters. Destiny's sister. child is, oh. <laughs> they are, they are in a cabin in, in the snow. In the woods. In the woods in the snow, and yeah. they're living out their lives. And the daughter is older now, and Damien has been passed off to the political figure to set up the movie, the original Omen. And um, and Daddy from the Witch shows up on his doorstep and is like, "Hey, I just want to like let you know that like your son is like still the Antichrist and like is well on his way to like you know like destroying the world." And I'm just like, want to let you know. And yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they also, course. the Catholic Church, like, knows where you are and knows that you're, doesn't know where you are, but they know that you survived. So they will be after you. So prepare for that sequel. And, um, yeah. And then your son's name is Damien. Yep. <laughs> and that's it. No, details. His name is Details. Yeah. And your son's name is Details. And that's the movie. Which is ironic because he's like does not pay attention to details at all. No, no, he's like no, no, the no. least detail oriented Antichrist I've ever seen. He's just a dumb kid. He's just <laughs> a dumb as a bag of rocks who likes to drop his mom off of uh, a terrace and, and where she not, spends the rest of a movie in the hospital. Sometimes that's what you have to do to your mom. You know? Sometimes that's what you have to do. So, but um, that's, for the greater good. For the greater uh, hellish good. Yeah, exactly. And that is the first omen. Well, the first one. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would say let's get into the rose and thorn. And I'm uh, going to go yes. ahead and say, what is your rose? One rose, one thorn. One rose, one thorn. One rose is Nell Tiger Free is fucking. She's chewing up the scenery in the most subtle of ways. And I I really do live for a nail tiger free. She was good. She, she was, was good. good. In this movie. She carried this movie on her Tank. gorgeous shoulders. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and on her gorgeous shoulders. And I I think we need to see a lot more of her in movies. I agree. I really liked her. I really She was her. able to play a lot of different things. She was a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. She's almost like understated in her performance, but when she goes dark, she fully commits. Like oh. her crazy like convulsions in the street. That's what but I like, was going to say. It was like 2 full minutes of just her doing that, and I was like, "Whoa." And it was so convincing. I was like, something's happening here. I don't really know what's going down, but there's a darkness up inside of this person. It was good. Uh, it was good. So, 
She did a good job. Good What's job. your thorn? My thorn is I did fall asleep the first watch and then I was like, Whoops. crap. <laughs> but I mean, I think it was just like the um, the mystery investigation uh, sequence of it all. Yeah, I was just like a little bit like, OK, guys, let's just connect the dots and go like they please. did Harry at the spy this movie. Yeah, I was just like, I we we the audience has connected all of the dots and we're just ready. We're waiting for you to connect those dots that we've already done. John, so, I knew in the beginning. Yeah, I literally knew in the beginning. I was like, OK, you're all but even I mean, but even like, obviously, like we get it. Like, it's not going to be like a huge surprise that she's going to no. be like, but at the same time, it's like the the actual mechanics and the 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 things that are stated in the movie along the way like i think the audience had already connected that like 25 minutes ago yeah and they were like okay just hurry up and it's just stupid and uh, but uh, but still beautiful beautiful movie thought it was an effective creepy creepy very creepy watch it in the dark all alone and especially if you're a a fervent catholic <laughs> yes always only if you're catholic yeah but what about you travis what did you do um when so, your, your one rose one thorn my one rose is my one rose is i like the cinematography yeah it was I thought, great i thought the it? cinematography was good yeah. that's my rose my thorn Gorge. is i really hated the choice for them to keep doing that to her hair like no joke <laughs> they did it they a did few it times multiple they? times <laughs> They did, and I they know did it, was, it, yeah. I know it was a choice. They were like, we have, I'm like, no, we don't need. Mm-mm. But I mean, ugh, is that part of the ritual? Do they have to do that? No, we didn't. We don't know. We never saw somebody else get pregnant with their hair looking like that. Yeah, I would want to know what that choice meant for the director. I get that it meant something, but also is it like as, a is it like a black halo or something? Or as like, a viewer, I'm like, girl, just let her have sweaty hair. That's she more had effective. to mug at she had to mug at some points, right? Yeah, I just for me, no, that was a weird choice. That did yeah. take me out, but I mean, that's not too much to complain about. I mean, yeah, really, it's a good movie. That's not much to complain about. Okay, so out of ten, so John, out of here, I'm going to come up with something really, really good. Actually, it might be mediocre. Okay, so, oh, this is interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So out of 10, out of 10 jackal fingers crawling out of the inside of a woman, what would you give this? I would give this, first of all, whenever I saw that, I was just like, that's disgusting. That was crazy. I was like, but John, uh, she was giving birth to Shredder. <laughs> she really was. <laughs> like it was just, I was just like, whoa. But also the gall to really go there, I I do applaud. Yeah, they did it because I mean, oftentimes we get horror movies that pull punches. This viscerally was not doing that. No, um, they were like, the devil is coming out of her, and you're going to see its nasty rat claws. And, and you're going to watch way, it. <laughs> it wasn't Shredder at all. Shredder was the other guy. It was the rat that lives in the sewer that lives with the Splinter. Teenage. Splinter. Splinter. And boy, was he splintering his way out. So out of, <laughs> yeah, so out of 10. I would give it a full solid eight, like in the best okay. way possible. There you go. Just because it's like, obviously, it's not a perfect movie, and it's, uh, but... It maintained its tone and committed to that tone all throughout. I think it's a perfect companion to the franchise because those are dark and creepy and moody movies. Yeah. Like, and they're also like really grounded in reality a lot of the time. And like, but also just like this, like elevated in a lot of like really artistic ways with like the visuals. I loved it. The visuals were nice. I want to watch it again. And like, and see those like callback moments, like the the teeth candles and stuff like that. Yeah, they really like there was they were meticulous in details. Yeah, they were. There was visually, really good, yeah, there was really some good moments visually. Yeah, and Nell Tiger Free, like, ugh, just like I want to, I want to see where she goes. Yeah, she's really good. She is. I liked her. Yeah, and also that name. It's yeah, crazy. Right. <laughs> so uh, you travis out of so uh, out of 10 um out of 10 
<laughs> out of ten splinter hands caressing your your bare belly um before you underneath uh a, yes. a black veil see the outline of a dog face over you about to to get nasty with you um, how what <laughs> How many of those would you do? So <laughs> what I would do is in that very moment, I would immediately break three of those fingers completely <laughs> off. And then I would give this movie a seven. Okay, good. That's a very, I fair. give it, I give it a seven. And the reason being is because a, I am, I do kind of feel like it could have been shorter just based off of some of the yeah. things. Yeah. Although, albeit, we wouldn't have gotten some of the visuals had it been. Now, I it was a bit slow in the beginning where I was like, yeah. okay, fucking get with it. And <laughs> I'm so tired of every scary child. And I'm not even talking about the drawings. Yeah. Basically, every child mm -hmm. literally looks like Samara from The Ring. Yeah, Samara they from The Ring They don't have to have dry, nasty. tangly hair. Look, I mean, also, what about uh, what about those young girls with with black, tangly hair who are really quite nice? And super cool, and they just couldn't get out of bed fast enough to get to school without untangling their hair. Yeah, I would like you to I would like them to make uh, a blonde haired gal with a full on perm uh, like scary challenge Honestly, you want to know what i want i want the true story of shirley temple because she was a demon <laughs> she was so give me shirley a demon. give me shirley temple as the demon and then we'll talk yeah. so that's why i give it a seven but outside of that totally sure, 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 fair. fine totally fair totally fair um but that's that's the show everybody we did yeah. it again we've uh, done it we hope you, you guys enjoyed it i did I certainly did. I always do, though. Yeah, I always enjoy this with you, Travis. And if you enjoyed this at home or wherever you're listening to this fine podcast program, um, please do um, give us a little follow on on the on the platforms. And, you know, just email us at meangirlsinterrupted at gmail dot com and uh, make sure you um, have a glorious, wonderful day a um a nice uh maybe maybe cup of coffee if this is in the morning a or cup of wine if it's in the morning a cup of wine if it's in the morning <laughs> um <laughs> we don't know you're you could be on vacation do you boo boo yeah you might and, suffer from crippling alcoholism <laughs> that you need to address but girl we're not here to judge you <laughs> no and that's not our job no. and it's our job here is to soothe your ear holes with our voices and yeah. jackal penises. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget jackal penises. <laughs> uh, so with that, Travis, I'm going to have to see you at the movies. <clears throat> um, you better douse yourself in accelerant, light yourself on fire and roll those credits, Angelica. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.